I've come to the Sound Academy in Toronto to interview my friends Hieri and Amon from the band Tear. Now, Tear hail from the Faroe Islands, and they're a folk metal band, but unlike other folk metal bands who blend the ethnic music of their country with heavy metal, the Faroese folk music is completely a cappella. <laughs> So that's how Tear began their career, by blending traditional heavy metal music with the songs of their country. Now as their career went on, things began to get more diverse and they began using traditional music and original lyrics and now Tear's music is very concise and a lot more traditional heavy metal than when it began. I've come to talk about that as well as their new album Valkyria, which is the most successful of their entire career. All right, I'm here at Toronto Sound Academy overlooking a beautiful frozen lake, Ontario, to speak with my friends Harry and Amon from Tier. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing well, thanks. I'm doing good, thank you. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I want to start off because people always classify Tier as uh, folk metal, and I feel like it's kind of misleading. You're on Pagan Fest in North America. That's how a lot of people in North America uh, really first got to know you, other than the internet, and, of course. But, uh, you know, you explained to me early on uh, when we first met that Tier's music, you know, being that the Pharaoh's uh, folk music is completely a cappella, uh, that Tier's music uh, in of itself. Uh, you know, ends up being a bit more metallic uh, than other folk bands. Uh, would you say that that's kind of true in that way? Yes, yes it is. Um, all we did was, you know, um, fuse regular heavy metal with some folk-inspired uh, songwriting. And uh, so it's, uh, for lack of better words, I suppose you have to call it folk metal in some way, but it just doesn't really belong in that genre. That's what we feel, at least. A lot of bands that... Um, combine the sort of ethnic roots of their country into their music uh, is, is sort of is, is the ethnic music of the Faroe Islands is it popular with younger people is that is that are you sort of different than everyone else in that sense you know when you decided to combine you know the past and the present like it, the band Thonic you know old Taiwanese elderly Taiwanese people show up to the concert because they like Taiwanese music you know is that is that normal for younger people to be that deeply invested in Faroese culture in the Faroes uh, it's uh, and it's not completely standard, but it's, I think it's more normal than uh, in, in the uh, surrounding countries. Mm -hmm. So uh, everyone will have heard you know, the folk songs that we use, uh, which I think is not the case in, in uh, for example, Denmark or, or, or Sweden or Norway. So uh, partway through, after the first couple albums, things seem to switch around and you stop sort of combining sort of traditional uh, s vocal songs to metal and you started writing, uh, I guess, lyrics for traditional music in itself and making that more metalized. You, around the time of land, you seem to switch in the opposite direction. Is that about true as well? Yeah, well, we took a sort of a turn there with um, using it in a more alternative way that rather than uh, uh, directly. Uh, so we, uh, I think you can say we blend both those styles of songwriting at the moment. After the album Land, you know, it was the major turning point in the band and, you know, w you and I have had discussions about this, you know, you were very progressive and, you know, the songs t could tended to be longer and very ornate in some places and you yourself told me that that wasn't really connecting with the audience in the way that you wanted uh, at the time and even though you had a lot of passionate fans, you know, you started to go for more concise songwriting. Uh, what, what was not there that you were looking for at the time? Well, for example, when we went from land to by the light of the Northern Star, um, I think I went for um, listenability, you know, something that people could listen to very easily and, and still sounded like to it. it. It did change, that's true, it became less progressive, but um, you just have to keep in mind that if we want to make a living of this, you have to find a way to make more people like it. 
hopefully without selling out. And, and I really enjoyed, that's what I really enjoyed about that turn of the time, is that the songwriting became more concise and, you know, not that the old stuff I don't think was unlistenable, but, uh, you know, it's funny, I would meet a lot of your new fans who had just gotten into you through, whether it be the, um, by the light of the Lord and Star or the, uh, the Lay of Thrym, and they're like, oh, I really love Tear, I just got into them, but why don't they play play their older music, you know what I mean? And it just seems, I, I get that reaction a lot from people. Why do you think uh, that, that, you know, that you weren't able to capture a larger audience's attention with the older material, but in retrospect, a lot of people seem to be enjoying it more, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I guess uh, the um, old stuff is too obscure for some people. For those who are interested in Nordic culture and, you know, obscure languages and all that, and progressive, awkward music, I, I mean, it's fine, but uh, it's just the fact that it doesn't capture a very broad audience. So uh, that's what we did with the new one. That's what I think, at least. I'm not always right. <laughs> well, certainly the band has become more popular uh, in the last three albums than you ever have been before. Uh, and I want to talk about the new record now, and I want to bring him on uh, into this discussion. But so, you know, the band has been uh, riding a very, like, steep wave of popularity, and each album it gets bigger than the one before. Each tour gets bigger than the one before. Each room gets bigger than the one before. So, you know, what were your feelings going into a band like this? It's not just, a, you know, another gig, you know what I mean? No, it isn't, but uh, I have been in the band before, in 2008. I was in Pagan Fest with Tour, <coughs> and... Uh, so, you know, the true fans have seen me, me before, and so it hasn't been a problem, I think. It's been, everybody's been kind. Uh, what's it like playing the material sort of in the intervening years? Um, you know, have you, uh, what, you know, what side of tier do you enjoy playing the most? You know, having to absorb this entire catalog after, I guess it's now six years uh, not being in the band? I like their new stuff really good. I, like, I love the new stuff. It's like really fast? Is it being yeah, done? It's more, yeah. I like it. So, so continuing on with the with the new stuff and talking about Valkyria and and commercially, like you know, you like you know, you're you're sort of winning the argument because this album's done better than any other album in the past. Um, you know, your, your uh, all their music has been you know very fictional and very mythological and relying on a lot of different themes, and and this one is too. But a lot of it, you know, just because you know we've talked, it's a, it's a lot of metaphor and you know for your personal self and, and things like that. And so when you play this album, you know, does there is there more passion in performing it because you're you're more connected to it? Well, that's hard to say. I, I also feel connected to the mythical stuff, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, I, I suppose you can say this is more personal. It, uh, the inspiration for it is maybe a mixture between uh, mythology and, and personal experience that I've had uh, in, uh, through many recent years. And um, it, it maybe it, it gives a special feeling to, to perform that w when you know you had some... Um, something a bit more specific in, in mind when you were writing the lyrics. And, and I guess I really like that in the sense that you're, you know, there's a lot of mythology in your music, but by sort of focusing it through yourself, you know, you have create in a way more original stories that come, you know, directly from you and, you know, the, the, lay, of, uh, the lay of My Love, for instance, you know, which is a great, and, and I mean this in the most positive way, cheesy video, uh, you know, and I mean, I mean in the most positive heavy metal way uh, that there can be, you know, it, it does create, you know, original situations, and uh, I, I think that's, that's something really positive. Is that something that, uh, I mean, in the past, you've relied very heavily on mythology. What does it feel like to sort of create your own legends through yourself, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's not entirely through myself. Uh, it, it's it's not um, it's not one hundred percent about me. You know, it's just like maybe uh, I, I can't say in percentages, but but you know, it's it's also uh, uh, based on you know observations about humanity in general. Uh, so um, I wouldn't put it all down to personal experience, but but uh, it it is uh, a different feeling when you write, uh, um, you know, c creating a tale, as you say, rather than just writing about one. So uh, it's more original, but the the general mythology around it is is um, is still taken from from old Norse mythology. The song "Dreams" is almost a, a theme song for Tear at times, and and what inspires you, um, and and as opposed to being inspired by pure mythology, is that a way you think you're going to approach your songwriting? You know, from this point on, I know there was a lot of pressure uh, to get this album out with a new label and things like that, but um, you know, in terms of now, you probably have a bit more time to think about what you're going to write in the future. Is that something? that you think you're going to to do uh, and keep fo sort of using yourself as a filter and using humanity as a filter or would you ever write purely you know fictional again um 
well, I have no plans in leaving uh, the, the um, mythology. No. I, I really don't know what I'm going to do for the next one. You know, I, um, we have a general theme already. Teddy and I came up with it, and um, it, it's very general. You know, we have sort of have to see which details we put into it, and uh, it's still uh, from mythology. Uh, how much of our you know personal experience comes into it? Uh, it's impossible to say at the moment, but uh, there's always some some of it. I feel like that this is a really like perhaps the most important time for the band uh, that you've ever had in the sense that you're playing uh, bigger tours than ever before and the album's uh, selling more than before. You know, you were you were on the road with them about six years ago and sort of right at that moment where Tear was really first being broken into North America. You know, it, it's does is how. You know, is that exciting or is it a bit nerve-wracking in the sense that right now this, this sort of feels like a make-or-break time, commercially speaking, for the band? And having seen both those sides and having gone away, how, what's, what's the main differences than before, in your mind? Now and then before? The main difference? Uh, I don't know. I think that the Pagan Fest were on the... That was pretty big tour also. But of course this is bigger. And uh, I don't really know the difference. It's, now I'm a, I'm a real member now, so that was always something. And so, with the fact that you are a real member at sort of this crucial stage, is that extra pressure for you, or is it? Are you, do you feel like you, you sort of got the dream job at the moment? I think I got the dream job. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. So, having that this is, you know, the the biggest sort of point for the band is being on Metal Blade and, you know, having this bigger exposure going to change the way the band does things. You're going to be touring longer. Uh, there's going to be more expectations of you. Is that going to uh, change the way at all that the band operates? It looks like we're having longer tours with um, Metal Blade, and uh, we have uh, definitely a, a better exposure in the U.S. and um, and Canada. And Canada, of course. Uh, when I say U.S., I mean North America. We have this. That's a common European thing. Yeah, yeah. I guess I should say North America. Uh, so um, it's not going to change the band. It's going to change more, more like the infrastructure around the band, I guess. So. Uh, and since you know that that's entirely up to Metal Blade, I can't really tell you h how all that works. We're doing the same thing, um, only realizing that we're working for a bigger label now. Uh, just a couple more. The you know you're. It's Do I ever stop? No, <laughs> no. I just keep going. Uh, the. Uh, the band, you know, people are get really passionate about your band, but because you know you're working it pretty hard, you're ending up on a lot of support slots and playing kind of, you know, short sets, and people, you know, sort of get really. It can be kind of good because they kind of get worked up and want to see the band again. But um, you know, because you're working so hard, are you going to find time uh, to to do any headlining shows and sort of get to expand the set list and maybe, um, you know, play some of those songs for fans who are discovering, you know, your entire catalog, or is it just is it better for the band right now to do these type of slots that you're doing with Children of Bodom? right now uh, I think you have to combine uh, all well, several several kinds of, of tours uh, this one has a bigger audience that we would draw by, uh, by ourselves definitely so we get to play for for um, more people and uh, well we play fewer songs but we play the ones we think is gonna sell the new album and gonna turn people on the tour on the other hand we, we try to um, play tours uh, like this one and other ones also we were on tour with rage for example which have nothing to do with the folk metal scene mm -hmm. Uh, same with Children of Bottom. So, uh, the, so we try to, um, you know, push forwards in all scenes. If you have to divide, you know, the, the music industry into scenes like that, so apparently you do. Um, so I guess we're we're going to um, continue doing both, and also um, hopefully do do um, a headliner tour, uh, maybe next year. The reason I ask is just to to finish up on you know you know the way that metal fans are metal fans you know are very passionate and dedicated and so they like what they like you know what I mean and they yeah. you know when they come to a show you know maybe they only they like three out of five albums of a band but they are passionate about yeah. those records or something like that so you know l like I said for, uh, near the beginning a lot of your new fans tell me that they become really interested you know in the old material so you know what would you say to to people who are sort of focused on that side of tier and 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 find the uh, uh, unlistenable aspects of tier you know to be more listenable than even yourself what would you say to somebody like that um, I think our, our past albums contain a lot of music that takes some getting used to so you're not gonna like it on the first listen uh, as opposed to maybe the three last albums that have some songs that you might you, if you like the kind of music you're gonna like it some of the first time you hear it so uh, if you you know give those albums a chance then then maybe uh, in time you're going to like the old ones as well be even though they're less uh, listenable 
um, just grows on you, I guess. Just kidding, I had 10 more questions. No, just kidding, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Aman Harry, thanks so much uh, for speaking to me today. Uh, best of luck on Valkyria and all the touring. Uh, I think it's just gonna get bigger from here. And uh, do you guys have any final words today? Yeah, congratulations on the new job. <laughs> and uh, happy birthday to Brian Slagle yesterday. Yes, happy birthday to Brian Slagle from Metal Blade Records. Aman, how about yourself? No, no words. Yes, happy birthday. Thanks.